Hey everybody, welcome to Bodiakian Wellness. Today we're talking epigenetics. Now as always, if you haven't already, do me a favor and hit that subscribe button. Now, for most of medical history, we thought that our genes, our genetics, played a huge part in our health and how we age. Uh, you often hear people say, oh, I can't, can't change it, it's in my genes, it's in my DNA. But what we now realize, and what we've realized for actually quite a few years, thanks to people like Dr. Bruce Lipton, that genetics play really about 5% of health and illness and, and aging, and really 95% of it is epigenetic. It's the expression of our genes. It's how our body interprets that DNA. So we're gonna look both at the science side and we're gonna look at the sociological side so we can understand and show you what you can do and the power that you have to change how you're living and how you feel and how you age. Uh, and we're gonna keep it really simple so it's not, uh, not, uh, it's not gonna zoom over your head. Uh, so we like to think of ourselves as a single solitary solid unit, but that's just really not the case. We are actually a combination of 30, roughly 37 trillion human cells and 38 trillion bacterial cells. So we are a massive city, a country of individual units working together to make this body. And what we call fight or flight, which is sympathetic, or rest, digest, heal, parasympathetic, these two autonomic nervous system states are how we are designed to exist. Now we're designed to be about 90% of the time in rest, digest, heal, parasympathetic and only 10% of the time, fight or flight, sympathetic. But that's not the case for most people. Now, back in the day, yeah, you wandered around, you foraged for food, and then five minutes a day, you uh, tried to hunt something or something was hunting you, you ran away, and that was your sympathetic stimulation for the day. Um, but nowadays, all the technology that we're surrounded with, all sympathetic stimulation. Every time we look at a phone, look at a computer, look at the television, sympathetic stimulation. Every time we look at a fluorescent light, sympathetic simulation. Every time we're in traffic, we get in an argument, we're on a, a telephone conversation, all these things, we're in this heightened state of, of awareness um, and readiness. And so we're literally in fight mode all the time. And when we're in fight mode all the time, we are not in healing mode. And it's, is it any really huge surprise that look around, we are getting sicker. We are getting unhealthier. We are having diseases, we are having pandemics, uh, we are having all these things that we are not doing so well from. Um, and a lot of this, how we respond to this, um, is dictated by internally how our body is doing, how our body is set and regulated, whether it's sympathetic or parasympathetic. So what you need to understand, we're gonna keep this really simple, is that on a macrocosmic level, me, if we look at a microscopic level, down to the cellular level, it's just we are represented what an individual cell is doing. And an individual cell, same as us, exists only in two states. Either it eats or it protects. Simple. So eat, rest, digest, heal, protect, fight or flight. Same thing. So a cell basically is tasting its environment all around it all the time. And it either says it's tonic or toxic, the environment around it. Now, if it says it's toxic, the information, proteins, antigens, that it's, that it's actually tasting, that is moving across the cellular wall into the cell, that's moving into the, the brain, the nucleus, that's then transforming and moving into the ribosome, the little factory, all this exchange of information is dictated by whether the, the receptors say tonic or toxic. So if it says toxic, information doesn't exchange properly, the DNA, the, the, the blueprint chart in the nucleus isn't read properly, things aren't replicated properly, the factory doesn't get the right instructions, and then that cell doesn't build its little organelles, its little cellular organs, or doesn't replicate itself properly. And then we get degeneration, we get inflammation, we get disease, cancer, anything you want to call it, it's just a cell not replicating properly. In contrast, if the cell tastes the external environment, it says tonic, this tastes amazing. Then information moves across, moves to the brain, moves to the factory, everything gets replicated properly and you get a cell that replicates itself. And remember, cells don't last that long, from a few days to a few months, but they always have to change and heal themselves, just like us. And they have to make new cells, just like us. And so 
Are we constantly building new cells that are better or as good as they were, or are they slowly getting worse and worse and worse? And we, and we call this oxidative stress. We call this degeneration. We call this aging. But really, it's a buildup of mutation, a buildup of genetic garbage that's building up in our, in our system because we're not replicating ourselves properly. Our individual cells, those 37 trillion cells, aren't replicating properly. Now, it's not up to the cell, it's up to the environment. And so we have a huge amount of power when it comes to that. And so we're gonna look at three factors. We're gonna look at the things that we bring in to that intercellular environment. We're gonna look at our interpretation of our reality around us, mentally and emotionally. And then we're gonna look at things we can add. And these are the three factors that we can dramatically change our health, our illness, how we age, how we feel, our energy, how we sleep, all of it. So, if the environment is toxic, that cellular environment, and that can be from the food we eat, the water we drink, the air we breathe, or our interpretation, our perception of reality. Remember, cortisol, stress hormone, if that's flooding, it's just as toxic. But let's start with food, simply. And we've done this in other videos before, my microbiome video or my healthy plate video, we'll put links below uh, so that you can uh, go through those and make sure you have a good understanding. But simple, we gotta take out the five key inflammatories. Wheat, dairy, corn, soy, processed sugar. This is not food. We're not designed to eat any of these things. Absolutely not. Oh, we need dairy so we can have, you know, our calcium. Mm -mm. No mammal drinks the breast milk of another species. Doesn't happen. No mammal drinks milk after 18 months of life. We don't produce renin, so we don't have the coagulant that allows us to process milk and digest it. Sorry. I know it tastes nice, but we are not, it is not food for us. Oh, wheat tastes great, bread tastes good, pizza tastes amazing, I know it does, but we are not designed for that. Polychain saccharides, multiple chain sugars, create an inflammatory reaction in our digestive tract. We are not designed to eat that stuff. Simple thing, if you can't walk into a field, pick it out of the ground and start munching on it, it's not food. I wouldn't say try it sometimes because you can't go in and eat it. It's just going to come through you after a whole lot of digestive upset. Wheat, dairy, corn, soy, processed sugar. Take them out. Toxic load drops dramatically. Second, water we drink. Now, it's the only fluid we need, period. We do not need any other fluid, and that includes kombucha. <laughs> we'll do another video on kombucha, but anyways. Um, water is the only thing we need, the only liquid we need. But we gotta make sure that the water we're drinking is not toxic. And we've done a lot of amazing, um, additions to our water supply here to take out a lot of the deadly bacteria that's, that was killing people for a long time. But unfortunately, those chemicals that we've added are also toxic and inflammatory. I live in Toronto. Toronto has almost seven times the toxic limit for chlorine. Fantastic. Chloramines in our water, all these things to break down the leaves that are coming in contact, all the bacteria that's, that, you know, that comes in the fall and whatnot. We have, to, we have to clean that stuff out. And I get that, but unfortunately, all those chemicals that we added are also toxic to us. They're also inflammatory to us. They also make us sick. They also stop us from healing. So adding something simple like a mineral shower filter, and I know this is not accessible for everyone, but I'm saying if you can, do it. Home hardware, Home Depot, Amazon, maybe not Amazon, uh, Walmart, whatever, whatever your local place that you can get a little $30 min mineral sh uh, shower filter, take out the chlorines out of your, out of your, fil out of your water. Do you know that we take in a hundred times more chlorine in our shower because we breathe it in, it goes right into our lungs, right into our blood system versus the water you drink? Obviously the water you, you're drinking at home, your tap water, if you can, if you have access to it, I know everybody doesn't, but if you do, a simple Brita filter will help. Just filter out some of that, lower your toxic limit. If you don't have that, what you can just do is fill a pitcher of water, let it sit out for several hours. Four hours, you've already off-gassed all, uh, all the chlorine. So if you don't have the means to buy a filter, there's a natural way to filter it. Sit it in the window so it sits in the sun. A few hours later, chlorine is done. There's always an option. Food you eat, water you drink. Next is air you breathe. Do you spend your whole time inside? Did you know that indoor air pollution is seven times more toxic, anywhere between five to 10 times more toxic than outside? So get outside, see some sunlight, breathe some air. The best, find somewhere in nature that you can hang out with a tree or two and breathe in what they give off and 
breathe back what they need. Connect to the planet, connect to the green around you. Take in some clean, fresh air. The food you eat, the water you drink, the air you breathe. This is what a big part of what creates that toxic or tonic environment inside you. Next section, interpretation of reality. Your mental and your emotional state, how you perceive the world around you. You can have a great life, but if you look at it as stressed, it's stressed. You can have a beautiful heavenly existence, but if you look at it like hell, it's hell. So look at three things. One, your home life. Do you feel happy at home? Do you feel stressed at home? Can you change it? Or can you change your perception? Can you understand the people that are affecting you a little bit differently? Maybe they're also suffering. Maybe they're also making bad decisions. If you can't change it, you try to understand it. Both are challenging, but both help the situation. Our work life, does it make you happy? Does it make you sad? Which is it doing? Is it creating sickness or is it filling your soul and your spirit? Maybe you can't change it. You got to do that job, whatever it is. But can you change your perception of it? Can you look at it as putting food on the table or that you're helping the world or you're helping society or you're building a product, whatever it is, you're pumping gas, whatever it is. It's your interpretation, your perception that creates your reality. And then last is your social circle. Do the people you surround yourself suck the life out of you? Are they energy vampires? Do you feel just exhausted just thinking about them? Or do they fill you? Do they make you smile? How much of your day are you spent smiling? How much of your day are you spent frowning? Think about it. We surround ourselves with toxic people, with toxic family members for some reason. Life is short. <laughs> Life is short. And you can't be last all the time. You can't be last. Sometimes you got to be first. And if you don't take care of yourself, you can't take care of others. For the parents out there with kids, you can't take care of them if you're not taking care of you. As a healer myself, I spend 50 hours a week. Now I'm awake 105 hours on average. I spend 50 hours a week taking care of other people, taking care of pain, digestion, anxiety. And 55 hours, I take care of Bodhi. I'm a pretty simple cat. I love to spend time with my lady, with my amazing wife. I hike, I meditate, I do Kung Fu, I do Qigong. And I watch some Netflix. <laughs> pretty much all I do. And these are all things that I love. And once again, only one of those things was in front of a screen. All the rest were parasympathetic, were meditative, were relaxing. We're filling my spirit so I feel healthy, so I can help other people. Because I have to take care of me first. It's not selfish, it's smart. I, I have dedicated my life to helping other people and the only way I can do that is if I take care of me. Last part of the equation is what can we add in? So what can we add into our life that is parasympathetic, that's meditative, that we get lost in, that we get engrossed in? That could be hiking, that could be knitting, that could be coloring, that could be yoga. Of course, you know I'm a big fan of Qigong, all the videos on this channel. I love Qigong specifically because it's accessible to everybody. Old, young, fit, fat, healthy, unhealthy, anything, any, any walk of life, you can do Qigong. You can do it seated if you don't have the ability to be on your feet. Or if you're older, you don't have the balance. Uh, you don't have to um, support your weight like yoga, so it's a little bit more accessible to everybody. But once again, as long as you're doing something that you get lost in, gardening. My backyard, I spent a great deal of time out here gardening, super meditative. And I know it's a big one for a lot of people who love to garden. Yes, it can be amazingly meditative, or you can stress about it. My flowers aren't growing the way I want them to grow. You're just one part of the puzzle. So these are the three aspects, the three different places we're gonna look at. The food we eat, the water we drink, the air we breathe is one section. Our social life, how we interact with the world around us, that's home life, family life, social life, work life. And then what can we add? What meditative, what parasympathetic stimulation can we add? Yoga, meditation, qigong, hiking, kung fu, crocheting. 
You have power. You have power in you live. You have power in how you heal. You have power in how you age. You can create heaven all around you or you can create hell all around you. And the more you create hell around you is the more toxic this body, this city, this country, this microcosm becomes. But you also have power to heal it. You don't need anybody else. You have the power. Think about it. Thanks very much uh, for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something. I hope it gave you something to think about. As always, do me a favor. Uh, share this video with your friends, your family, anybody who needs it, anybody who's struggling right now, because there's a lot of people struggling right now. So share this video. Get them to change their perception, their perspective on life. And of course, don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.